Hey, Bible lovers, on this fourth session, one thing that we hear a lot on Bibles is that scars is this great thing, and it's wonderful to have these scars. And oh, check out this scar, and we're showing off the scars. Well, what does Steven Siegel think about it? Are scars a good thing? Check it out. Now, what are your thoughts on natural flaws and scars and things like that? Is that something that you try to avoid, or do you consider that a feature? No, no, no. Of course we try to avoid this. The only reason to buy it is it's cheaper. There's no reason to buy that unless it's less money. On this business, the money is always made in the best grades. You never make any money in the low grades, never. So you try, you always try to buy the best grades you can. And then but invariably, even with the best grades, you're going to have, you're going to have a lot, a lot of problems. You know, a lot of hides that just aren't going to make it. So those might go, you might, you'll do something to the grain to, you know, to hide the defects. Now, that doesn't make the leather inferior. It just means the grade is lower. It means it costs more money. It was a lot more effort to, to create, you know, to find such a product. So aesthetically, it's very different. But, you know, practically, uh, you know, it's not a big difference unless, unless you're talking about mechanical leathers, you know, where you might have a grain flaw that weakens the leather. But yeah. a small grain flaw and, you know, a leather that's used for a Bible, I don't think if it doesn't penetrate the grain, it's aesthetic. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, people don't like it because of the aesthetics. Yeah. Um, so it's really important to you that your company represents what has happened to the leather very honestly so that the buyer knows exactly whether this has been stamped, whether this has been milled or whether this is completely natural. Yes, yes, yes. And we're known for this. I mean, people we have been known for this for decades. I, you know, we've sold leather. Um, I, I know the people that made the, made the polo boots for King Charles, you know, that was wow. leather. I know leather that was used as presented as presents, special presidents to three of the presidents of the United States while they were presidents was our leather. I know that Nancy Reagan's saddle was, was a birthday present from her husband. That was our leather. Uh, we made an FDA leather that emulates human skin that's used all over the world to test medical instruments. And we're the only people that make this leather. You know, we have to be reliable or test results won't come out right. We've, we've sold leather for many uses in, in books that I, I'm not allowed to say whose books or who the binders were, but I'm told, you know, they're books that are well, well, well into six, maybe even seven figures. Yeah. Uh, they're a lot of money. We sold, you know, I played polo for 25 years and we sold leather to many of the best polo players in the world, uh, more specifically for the stirrup leathers, because if your stirrup leathers fail, you end up in the ground. You might end up dead. You may not end up dead, but you'll end up hurt. So you want good stirrup leathers. Our leathers were, went to anyways from six to 12 of the Kentucky Derby winners. Those are the stirrup leathers. Those guys, don't, they're not going to fool around. They're going to buy leather that they can depend on and someone's reliable. But what you're sending, what you're telling them it is, it really is. I, I can't even think of all the different things we've done. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. I would say of all the things about our company, that's that's probably what we're known for the best is more about what our leather, how it's made, and we're willing to, and we would love to share that knowledge. Mm -hmm. We can't give you all the formulas, that's proprietary information, but we'll give you enough formulas that you can make a decision as to whether the leather is appropriate, you know, as opposed to maybe something else. For example, many times people sell leather, they call it vegetable tint. And of course, doing business, you know, we, we lab test our leather. I, I don't know anyone else that does that to make sure it's vegetable tint. We haven't lab tested all our leather and we haven't lab tested every batch. Okay. But we do lab test it from time to time to try to stay spot on that really is vegetable tint. At the same time, we'll, we'll buy through a straw buyer, we'll buy someone else's leather that claims it's vegetable tint. And most of the time, most most of the time, that leather is not vegetable tan from our from other companies. It, it many times it's semi chrome or or maybe it has aluminum in it or something like that. And I don't think the people they're selling the leather know this because the tanners don't know. There's so many ways. For example, chrome can end up in a piece of leather. Then unless you test it, you don't know. For example, for for decades we used to buy leather from India. And, you know, we'd say, we'd insist, you know, it'd be goatskin, we'd insist it has to be pure veg. And every time it came in, you know, I, I could, I can tell on my hands and my fingers. I don't, I don't, this is the only skill I have probably in my life, in my 
head is I can tell my fingers that's not it's not pure vetch. It, it, you know, in the leather had one percent chrome in. They call it they call it chromimo. And you know, invariably we, we complain. We can never get in decades. We can never get pure veg leather out of it. Yeah. Maybe it's available today. I don't know. We haven't bought any leather from India in um, maybe 15 years. Because in that part of the world, what I feel is going on to the tanner in India, he puts a little bit of chrome in so he can sort the leather and can see the defects. It's you know, it's a stage of processing. And they to them they put in such a small amount according to them, they consider it irrelevant. So they say, no, it's it's pure vitch. So it's like just a little, it doesn't count. But but to someone else, it does count. Mm -hmm. So and then then it's sold to someone else who finishes the leather, but and they're sold to them as pure veg, but the people that buy it, they don't test it. Uh, you know, they they take someone else's word that's pure veg and they go on and then they resell it as pure veg, but it's not. Now is that important? It's important in terms of cost. It's much cheaper to make a piece of leather like that. It's important to live in integrity. You know, is it is it chrome, does it have chrome in or not? If it has a small amount of very, very small amount of chrome, it's not gonna make that much of a difference in how it works, but it will make a huge difference in what the leather costs, a tremendous difference in the cost. So if you're paying a, a premium for vegetable leather that has chrome in it, you should not. So what is chrome? Chromium sulfate. Chrome has a bad name. It's a tanning agent that was developed in the 1830s. It has a lot, a lot, a lot of environmental issues, a lot. There are two valences for chrome, chrome 6 and chrome 3, and chrome 6 is definitely carcinogenic and chrome 3 is not. And the leather can switch, and the process being made can switch between chrome 3 and chrome 6, and the leather has to be tested to see if there, you know, how much chrome 3 and chrome 6 there is before it's put into production, before it's put into manufactured good. And some people feel, and I have never been able to find a test where, for example, if you took a bunch of sneakers, sneakers would be made out of chrome tan leather, you threw it in a dump, then the process of decom decomposition that converts to chrome six, that ends up the water supply and ends up with poisoning you. I don't, I don't know if it really happens, but I think it does. It's not a very popular position, but there is a reason that everyone in the world is moving away from using the chrome. Is that why some animal hides will have a strong chemical smell? No, the chemical smell is not, not from the tanning agents, more so from the fat liquors. You know, the greases and the oils that hold the collagen. To, you know, they kind of kind of lubricate the, the collagen with the fibers, you know, slide, slip and slide back and forth. It holds everything together. Okay. Uh, I, you know, it's good. Uh, or it lets everything slip and slide, let's say. Uh, it, it's very, very important. It's, it's an unbelievably important for the production line there. So you can you can use you can use fat liquors that smell real nice. You can use some that smell pretty nasty. Interesting, because a lot of the cheaper leathers will definitely have like that strong chemical odor when you take it out of the box. It could just be the fat liquors. I, I mean, I'm so used to smelling leather, I can't think of examples that smell really off. Yeah, um, I know some of the mass-produced uh, ones. When you some of them will have a really nice smell when you get them out, and then there are some that are, whew, it's it's repugnant. That could be the the finish on the surface. So, you know, it could be a, a pigmented finish, which would be the equivalent to paint. Okay. So you can, you can think of wood and leather very much as having similar properties. So if you're interested in messing around with it, you know, with finishing leather, you can go to the hardware store and buy stuff that you might use for wood. And it, in some cases, it'll work very well for leather. Yeah. It's a lot cheaper too. <laughs> it's a lot cheaper and maybe better. Uh, you know, you get more, more, more chances because those products, they're, you know, there's more maturity in, in that, that part of the market. Well, there you have it. I was a little bit surprised by this one because I'm a person that appreciates a good scar on leather sometimes. But when it comes to premium Bible leathers and leather workers and those who are selling leather, they prefer to have their leather perfect without any scars. So let me know what you think in the comments. God bless you. Keep calm. Jesus on.